We have 10 minutes and we can possibly do the wasa. Which is going to be triple with the necessity of changing the, well, varying the limits as with the triangle. And I will do the complete analog, 3D analog of the triangle. And the analog is going to be a pyramid. So, should we go to the last example? So this way I will finish doing triple integrals and today, no, tomorrow's, tomorrow is going to be saved for your questions if you have any about integration. Okay, now the setup is going to be that you have a triangular pyramid and the pyramid is going to be special because one vertex will have all the angles between the edges, right? So that the whole thing is like uh, the right triangle in the horizontal plane and the vertex of the pyramid is positioned in three space right above that right angle. So that suggests naturally that this vertex is chosen as the origin of coordinate system. The three edges from that vertex will be chosen as coordinate axis, so x, y, and z. And again, let me do the same problem I have on file, making different choice of the order so that you can compare and see that uh, the computation is different, but not conceptually different. So the question is about, okay, let me choose notation. That vertex is called S. S. P has length 2, as q has length 3, and as r has length 4. And the function to be integrated is the square of the distance from the side SPQ. S -P -Q. So it is the square of the z coordinate of the point. So, according to this coordinate system, the function is going to be f of x, y, z equals z squared. And the question is to find the triple integral of that function. Over the whole pyramid, I'll call it R again. Uh, well, R is used whatever the pyramid is. So, by definition, that triple integral is limit as delta V goes to zero of what? Of the sums. And there will be three sums. And what is it that we are adding up? We are subdividing the whole pyramid into little boxes. And then for each box, we choose a point inside with coordinates x, i, y, j, and z, k. And then we evaluate the function f at that point. multiplied by the volume of that box, little box, and we add over all the boxes inside the pyramid. 
and let me choose the order different from so I chose XYZ in the nodes. Let's choose Z, Y, X. Oh. And then we have to convert the whole thing to XYZ completely. So delta V becomes delta X times delta Y times delta Z. And the whole limit is the limit is delta X goes to zero, delta Y goes to zero, delta Z goes to zero. All those sums. times delta x. Well, my choice was delta z first, times delta y, then times delta x. So if we choose the order of those deltas appropriately, then the innermost thing already looks like an integral with respect to z, and I end up having a limit as delta x goes to zero, delta y goes to zero of sums over i and j of integrals with respect to z of the function f of x, i, y, j, and z times delta y times delta x. And the fundamental question is about the limits. So we have to look at uh, that summation over z. So we add it over z, meaning that we add up all the values in direction of z. So that summation was about looking at those stacks, vertical stacks of little boxes. Now the problem is that the size of that stack differs as we move around the pyramid. The stack is practically nothing at the corners and it's very long around the origin. So the limits of the stack are going to be those two things and we notice that in this case all the stack, all the stacks begin with the value z equals zero. The bottom limit is E, it's not changing. The upper limit is changing. Now, if you look at that 3D stack, for what is that limit going to depend on? It will depend on those two values, x, i, and y, j. Right, so we expect that to be a function of x, i, and y, j, of both. So, x, i, and y, j give you a point in the x, y plane. Right? So, let's look at that point. x, i, y, j. How do we determine the height of the stack above that point? We have to determine that point on the plane. Right? So we need the equation of that plane. So we find an equation of the plane that provides this limit of the plane PQR. Do you still remember how to find the equation of a plane through the given three points? Well, let me pretend you successfully found it quickly. And the equation is ax plus by plus cz equals d. So what do you do with that equation? And notice that there are many equations. 
you multiply the whole equation by a constant, you have another equation of the same plane. So don't, don't worry about the uh, the choice of which equation to use. Because what you will have to do is you will have to figure out the z value out of this equation. So you'll have to solve for z because the x is going to be actually that xi, y is going to be yj, and z will be something you would have to solve for. So solve for z in this equation. Z equals d minus a x i minus b y j divided by c. And then this is a function of x i and y j. You can take this, put it as a limit. And at this point, you are done with the innermost integral. And what you have to continue with is essentially the double integral with respect to y and x. So you may treat the rest of the problem as double integral uh, over which region in the xy plane. Well, essentially, you added up all the things along those vertical stacks. And now you have to add up all those values over all the stacks. So if you look vertically on the whole picture, right, from above, you will see all those stacks, and they are all arranged over this triangle in the xy plane. And so you will have this xy plane, you will have a triangle with sides 2 and 3, And all these stacks are going to be seen over that triangle. So you'll have to integrate <coughs> over the triangle, and you know how to do it. So you'll have that integral with respect to y having limit 0 and a function of x. And then final integral with respect to x will have simple limits 0 and 2. And then, well, you see, the complexity aggregates as you go higher in dimension, but there is nothing conceptually new coming in. <laughs>